Hey, it's Dr. D-Flow, and today I'm going to build a syringe pump. A syringe pump is capable of producing much smaller flow rates than a traditional pump, and it's not pulsatile like a peristalsis pump. I'm building two syringe pumps for use in the biomedical engineering lab that I work in. These DIY pumps cost about $200 to build and save thousands of dollars compared to commercial syringe pumps. I'm gonna use the same design in my upcoming food 3D printer series. Just imagine, instead of the extruder motor, you have the syringe pump motor. This design should integrate seamlessly with the firmware of existing 3D printers. Subscribe to follow the build of my food 3D printer and to figure out why my team and I suspended LEDs in epoxy in our upcoming video. Dr. D-Flow. The creator of this project is Narum. You can find everything you need at their Hackaday post. I also have a bill of materials on my website linked in the description because I used a couple of different parts. The build is quick and easy, but it does require 3D printing. First, you will fasten the 3D printed motor mount to the extruded aluminum by using the T-nuts and screws. Next, attach the NEMA 17 motor to the motor mount using four M3 screws. I'm using a relatively low powered NEMA stepper motor, which uses 0.8 amps at 12 volts DC. We need to convert the radial motion from the stepper motor into linear motion so that we can push the plunger of the syringe. We will accomplish this through using the stepper motor to turn a threaded rod and then having a nut on the 3D printed piece that will push the plunger. If you screw a nut onto a bolt by spinning the bolt, then the screw moves linearly. However, we need to prevent the bolt from spinning, and we can do this through using a linear rod. The linear ball bearing fits snugly underneath the nut. Screw on the plunger attachment about a third of the way, then slide the barrel holder and then the syringe tip holder onto the threaded rod. Slide this assembly onto the aluminum base. Don't forget the T-nuts and screws for the barrel and tip holders. Use your syringe to measure out the placement of the barrel holder. Next, insert the linear rod through the bottom holes and then through the linear bearing. This rod is held in place purely by friction, so it could be a little bit difficult to push through. Next, we need to couple the 8mm threaded rod with the 5mm shaft of the stepper motor with, you guessed it, the shaft coupler. Tighten the screws as much as possible without stripping them. Because this syringe is being used in my lab, I'm going to use an Arduino Uno as the brains. However, when I work on the food 3D printer, I will use a Ramps or Rambo microcontroller to control the syringe pump. An Adafruit motor shield will be used to control the stepper motors. This shield can power two stepper motors at a time with 1.2 amps per stepper motor. There are a lot of power-hungry NEMA 17 stepper motors out there, so make sure yours is below 1.2 amps or you'll fry the stepper driver. We were so close to going an entire video without soldering, but we need to solder the headers onto the motor shield so that it will connect to the top of the Arduino Uno. Most stepper motors have four wires, but mine has six. And to make matters worse, the Adafruit motor shield has five screw terminals for the stepper motor. After consulting some documentation, which I uploaded to my website, I found out which four of the six wires were the complementary wires for the two coils. The middle terminal is ground. So I went ahead and sent the two wires that were not complementary to the coils to the ground on the terminal. And then I wired it as follows. I'm going to power my Arduino with 12 volts via the barrel jack. 
12 volts is the perfect amount for my stepper motor. You can bridge two pins on the stepper motor shield so that the shield will draw power from the barrel jack of the Arduino. I'm bridging these pins now. Or you can supply external power to the terminal just above these pins. Now it's time to do a little coding. Go ahead and download the motor shield library from Adafruit and install the Arduino IDE if you've not. The code for this is actually extremely easy. So go ahead and open up the IDE and then go to examples, motor shield, stepper test. I modified this code a little bit and deleted everything in the loop except for the single coil steps. I found that 2,750 steps was about 10 milliliters for my 50 milliliter syringe. And that's it. You can just play around with the forward and backward numbers and that will move your syringe forward and backwards. It's that easy. Connect your Arduino with the USB cable to the computer and upload it. I made a small mistake. Can you spot it? I accidentally placed the barrel holder backwards so that you can't depress the syringe all the way. I fixed this by quickly switching it around. I created my syringe pump so that it would fit a 50 milliliter syringe. However, when you download the files, the STLs are meant for a 30 milliliter syringe. Well, the creator of this project made it really easy to adjust this to fit any syringe. So what we need to do is go into the source file and we need a program called OpenSCAD. It's free and pretty easy to use. You'll most likely only have to change two of the files, the plunger attachment and the barrel holder. All you have to do is measure the syringe and then enter the measurements for plunger diameter, plunger thickness, plunger inner diameter, and it'll make all the adjustments for you. Then you can do file export and export the STL. Thanks for watching. I'm excited to incorporate this DIY syringe pump into my food 3D printer. I'll see you guys soon.